Taiwan. I'm Ethan Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan has revealed a new material it's developed to enhance the protection of tanks and armored vehicles. Observers say it's needed for modern warfare. 网战车哈，它是一个陆战之王哈，会面对各种各样的呃，比如反战车飞弹哈、反甲火箭哈，甚至哦，现在哈无人机的攻击啊，所以其实增加了相关的防护力是很重要的。台湾 National Zhongshan Institute of Science and Technology developed the armor to be lighter and stronger than previous materials. The new technology could be used on Taiwan's Clouded Leopard armor transport vehicles and M60 tanks. Modern weapons and drones have destroyed thousands of tanks in the ongoing war between Ukraine and Russia. A top Taiwanese security official is describing recent Chinese military drills around Taiwan as the most threatening yet, revealing more about the latest round of exercises this week and what China's intentions were. Our reporter Rick Lauer has more. While Monday's drills have been described as presenting more threats than ever to Taiwan, forcing the military to react quickly to those threats, and the security official also outlined how China fired two missiles, so that's some rare live fire drills near Taiwan. They also said that 25 Chinese Coast Guard boats and Navy vessels approached close to Taiwan's contiguous zone. That's 24 kilometers off Taiwan's coast. Why was China conducting these drills? Well, the security official said that with these exercises, China is practicing how to turn drills like this into a full-out attack. China, of course, has been doubling down on its rhetoric. On Wednesday, it said it would never recount using force to take Taiwan, and this all comes as Taiwan has been offering olive branches. To Beijing, President Lai Ching-te used his、um, National Day speech to suggest that there could be more dialogue across the strait and areas that the two countries could cooperate on. For example, he flagged the epidemic responses and climate change. And this week, a government agency has also suggested that new frameworks could be used to facilitate exchanges. And is even planning to send two native Taiwan deers to China as a goodwill gesture. So, despite Chinese aggression, why would Taiwan still be keen to push for dialogue across the strait? Well, I spoke to Jai Yin Zhong of the Uni- National University of Singapore to find out more. So, I think for Taiwan, they are willing to try to move ahead on the relationship、uh, across the straits. They want to show goodwill. They are also trying to avoid、uh, and actually demonstrate that they are not the troublemaker. They are not the intransigent party that Beijing is trying to paint them as. Beijing has been quite determined to label Lai as a troublemaker. They call him a dangerous separatist for his comments on Taiwan and its sovereignty. But what we've seen from Lai, especially from his National Day speech, is that he's keen to ca- carefully choose his words so as not to provoke Beijing. Now he's showing that his administration will push for dialogue across the strait, even as more details of Chinese aggression emerge. Eason Chen and Rick Lauert in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Relations between North and South Korea have taken a sharp downturn over the last week, with the North now defining the South of its primary enemy. Reese Ayers has more on what's happening on the Korean Peninsula. Tensions have been ticking up on the Korean Peninsula, with the North even altering its constitution to officially designate the South as a hostile state. North Korea has said they're no longer interested in peaceful unification with the South. Days after blowing up the few remaining road and rail links between the two countries, that Pyongyang has said was in response to Seoul sending propaganda drones over North Korea. South Korea has neither confirmed nor denied those accusations, a response that could risk further increasing tensions. Sources we've spoken to seem to think that a military operation from the North is unlikely. Though experts are worried that the North could shell the DMZ, or even send their own spy drones to Seoul in retaliation, the situation has gotten so tense that even China is weighing in. Uh, we are also very concerned about the development of the North Korean military. Uh, we have a long history of maintaining the peace and stability on the North Korean Peninsula. We strongly believe that the North Korean military should be able to resolve the North Korean problem peacefully, and we hope that the North Korean government will make efforts to do so. 
Meanwhile, Japan, the US and South Korea have set up the Multilateral Sanctions Monitoring Team with the purpose of monitoring the enforcement of sanctions on North Korea. Those sanctions coming from the UN aimed at curbing the North's nuclear program. This team has been set up outside of the United Nations, and that's because Russia blocked renewal of a UN program designed to monitor Pyongyang. The US and South Korea have said Russia and North Korea have already made illicit arms deals. They deny it, but have publicly vowed to boost military ties. All this creating further concerns for the international community that North Korea has no plans to slow down its nuclear program and that tensions may continue to rise. Chris Ma and Reese Ayers in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. Chip giant TSMC is predicting continued strong performance supported by growing demand for AI technology. The company reported 23.6 billion US dollars in revenue for the third quarter of the year, marking a 39% year-on-year increase. It expects similar revenue in Q4 and for 30% revenue growth for all of 2024. In an earnings call on Thursday, company CEO CC Wei said demand for AI is in its early stages and he expects revenue from AI products to more than triple this year. TSMC did not say when its advanced Gaussian plan would come online, but said its first fab in Europe in Dresden, Germany, would begin producing in volume by the end of 2027. A solar farm project in central Taiwan has hit a roadblock with concerns that it may actually harm the environment. It's the sort of snack that could add an extra obstacle on Taiwan's path to green energy. Zhang Mantras reports. It may seem like an unlikely place for a power station, but solar panels like these have been sprouting up across fish and clam farms in Taiwan south and center. Here in Zhanghua County's Fangyuan Township, clam farmers on hard times are eager to sign up. Climate change, disease and shrinking groundwater supplies have seen production drop. These farmers are aiming to turn over as much as 40 percent of their land to solar panels, with the hope that the rent money the power company provides will help their businesses survive. But the county government has reservations. Though the Energy Administration in Taipei gave permission for a trial covering 20 percent of the land and two panel makers got on board, local regulators have blocked the project since 2022. Because while the project may look green, there are questions about whether it could actually harm the environment. Some environmentalists worry that it could affect the bird habitats provided by the open land and that the panels themselves might leak toxic materials into the water. Local officials say for the project to go ahead, clam farmers will need to further explain how they'll deal with the question of potential toxins from the panels getting into the water. It's issues like this Taiwan faces as it tries to wean itself off both nuclear power and fossil fuels, one of the government's big missions for the coming years. Hank Xu and John Van Trieste for Taiwan Plus. A new permanent exhibit at the presidential office is spotlighting Taiwan's history of comic book animation. Wesley Lewis was there to check out the display. We're here at the presidential office in Taipei as its public gallery gears up to unveil a new permanent exhibit this weekend. And on display are Taiwanese comics. The exhibit is called Together as One with Taiwan, The Arc of Democracy. It covers everything from comic books depicting Taiwan's history to edgy contemporary graphic novels. The gallery's opening comes after last week's National Day Presidential Office Light Show, where Taiwan's comics featured prominently. Taiwan's comic book business has experienced several golden ages and periods of downturn, but recent government initiatives plan to give the industry a boost, 
and to try and tap into the global market, worth tens of billions of dollars. The showcase opens to the public on October 19th and will be on display until 2028, providing visitors ample time to come immerse themselves in this colorful exhibit. Joseph Wu and Wesley Lewis in Taipei for Taiwan Plus. In Taiwan's outlying Jinmen Islands, a tunnel originally built in case of war with China now hosts an annual music festival. Kaden's Korontal reports. A moving performance inside an old military tunnel, now the site of an annual two-day music festival in Taiwan's outlying Kinmen Islands, just a few kilometers from China. The venue, as integral to the show as the music. Off the coast of China, but governed by Taiwan, Kinmen is the front line between the two sides, with China claiming sovereignty over Taiwan. When China bombarded these small islands with shells in the 1950s, this tunnel was built for boats to transport military supplies. But now, its thick granite walls serve as a natural echo chamber creating acoustics perfect for concerts and leaving those that witness them in awe. Though now showcased by the music festival, this old tunnel is not the only reminder of war here. Kinmen's past as a frontline battleground is still palpable across the island today, and its history brings in tourists. Several former military sites like this tunnel are now open for people to visit. But unlike the island's other sites, where tourists revisit history, music has given this tunnel a new life, selling out over 1,500 tickets for this year's festival in just two minutes. And for the first time, Pieces were composed specifically for this festival. Performing his original poem, poet Xiangyang emphasizes the need for peace. In the current situation, from the confines of this wartime tunnel, a call for peace and a celebration of life, with poetry and music transforming reminders of a difficult past into a beacon for the future. Ryan Wu, Pichi Zhuang, and Keynes Corata for Taiwan Plus. Taipei Fashion Week, the biggest fashion event in Taiwan, is officially underway. This season's theme, Taiwan Type Fashion Atlas, will feature Olympic gold medalist boxer Lin Yuting as a model embodying the confidence and resilience of Taiwanese fashion. The opening showcased the work of local fashion designers and IP image creators who for the first time collaborated to make fashion more accessible to younger people. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. Finally, we leave you with images of iconic cars from TV and film on display at the Paris Motor Show. I'm Ethan Liu, take care and I'll see you next time.